Greetings, my name is Dennis Daniels. Let's talk about SIGWIN, which is a Linux-like environment. Xterm, which is the uh, terminal to access the command line in SIGWIN, and uh, the Windows desktop. We'll be show, I'll show you here how to uh, change the font size. First off, of course, should be SIGWIN.com. Take a look at uh, the application. It's very handy, uh, and I hope to get into some scripts and what you what you could do with Sigwin here very soon. Uh, let's go to the terminal right off the bat. I've already started Sigwin here, and you can see I've got the terminal started now. You, the viewer at home, is going to say, "I can't see that," and you're right because it's too small. So what I've been digging around for on the web, for this, or on history, and you can see right here that I've found, or that I've been changing the uh, uh, past a couple of commands already. Let me show you what the first one does. Um, I can just arrow up, and 14 times 24, you can see as I arrow up, going to the history, which you cannot do uh, under XP, um, and if you are doing a lot of serious work, um, which some of you probably want to be doing on the computer, um, it's one of the things that makes your life easier on your Linux environment is that the history remembers everything you've done. Uh, so I've just passed a command to the um, terminal, started a second terminal, you can see that here, xx, if I go into my navigator, there's two x's now. Um, what I've just done is I've created a second instance, let me exit out, second instance, and the second instance is going to be a courier font, with the font size of 12. Now I can do the same thing, pass that as a font size of 36, just so you can see the difference. And there it is, that's a 36 point font under Courier, using Courier. And um, because I've passed it through as a command, it gives us text wrapping. Now, the only reason I can't see it, you can't see it at the end, uh, is because my, uh, my screen is not properly configured. Exit out. Um, so you can play with that, and the terms are. Uh, I, mean, I personally like it's control A to jump to the beginning and I'll pass Arial as my font for Arial at 36. That should be enough. So as you can see at home, we think viewers at home. Uh, echo X turn is quite powerful. All right, now what I need to do, and we'll do this in the next tutorial, is show you how to uh, pass this command so that it always loads your terminal at a particular size. So, what have we learned? We learned a little bit about how to, uh, uh, we learned about how to change the font size. <coughs> Now we're going to get into changing font size, Control S, F5, changing font size on X term. Control S, F5. Now let's get into navigating on the desktop. It took me a little while to figure it out, so I figured I'd share this information with you. SIG drive, C, documents, and settings, ABC, desktop. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to pass my font off a little larger. And now let's see. Let's see if I can grep my history. Uh, grep. Uh, let's pass my history to a history file. History.txt. Ls. There it is, cat history.txt. That's all the history of this particular terminal. So, uh, what I'm looking for, clear, 
I'm going to grep my history file for a word. What word am I looking for? What word am I looking for? I'm looking for desktop. Oh, right. Uh, you got to first pass the command. Haha. <laughs> Clear. Grep. Desktop. History.txt. Now, there it is. Okay, so. Um, let's do that again. Clear. We'll find that command, and we'll pass the less command after it so we can read it slowly. CD desktop, CD desktop, CD 270, history, SIG drive, C. Okay, that looks positive right there. That is our, our space bar. And I can pass this, pa this command here pass the whole history to SIG drive C documents. Um, let's see if I copy this. If I copy this, I just right clicked on it, and now I Q, clear. Now on my mouse, I should be able to hit the center mouse wheel, and the command will be copied, will be pasted. Uh, something happened, I'm not quite sure what. Clear. Try that again. Uh, interesting. Um, it tried to do it, but I'm not quite sure what happened in the process. It looks like, oh, it did do it. Um, but this got truncated, some chunk here got truncated. So let's see what, oh, there it is, look at that, it got truncated, truncated for whatever reason. Ah, the copying and paste was not totally, was not totally successful. Document, see that, and settings. Okay, it didn't pick up the text wrap very well. Um, and it's probably, yeah, because... The uh, yeah, it looks like the text wrap didn't didn't go down very well. History right there. T O R Y dot T X E. Okay. So normally though that will work on your in your environment. Um, so how would I clean up this command? Let's clear it first. Clear. And let's find our well. Clear. Clear. I know history. So I'm going to write that out to. Let's see where I would first. LS. CD root LS. Okay, SIG drive is our. This is our target right here. Okay, so. Uh, let's go ahead and just go straight to it. SIG drive. I know it's in C. Uh, I know it's in Documents and Settings, and I just tabbed, and it just popped up through there. So if I tab, if I continue to tab, it will tell me all of the folders and files that are available to me. ABC is my next folder. Tab, and I'm going to put on the uh, tab. I'm going to put on the desktop. D, and it's, uh, tab, tab. Those are all my files on the desktop. And there is the history file that I wrote earlier. So let's go ahead and give this a new name. Um, now I've got my path. Now I've got my path. I can control A. It takes me all the way to the front. So I'm going to history. I'm going to write my history out to SIG drive. Control E takes me to the end. And now I'm writing my new document, history1, history1.txt. And what, what just happened is the whole full, this, the history, history, this one here, it's going to screen bias here, was just written to my desktop. You're going to say, wow, that's pretty cool. You're right, that is pretty cool. That means you can move documents anywhere you need to um, through a simple command.
And I can save that command. We can get into that in a moment, but we can do quite a bit through the power of redirects. This is the magic right here, is the redirect echo. The redirect is powerful. Now you're wondering, all right, you're going to take us there. Let's go there, take a look at it. See the SIG drive, see documents and settings, uh, ABC, desktop, one his, uh, and then we'll go to the desktop, LS, and LS, L-E-S-S. -S. What we're looking for is my one his, oh, quit, Q. Do that again. Uh, oh, I need to cue that. What did I call my last document? History. This is where history comes in handy. I called it history. Let's go to history 10. History 10 less. My font is so large for you, the user, I can't read what I've written. Oh, history1.txt. Okay, that's right. Uh, Q, ls, ls, history, star, and that's going to give me all my history documents. Right there. Alright, there it is. By putting the star at the end, it tells me all of my documents on the desktop. Uh, clear, and I can do the same thing ls star.html will tell me all the HTML documents on the desktop. Uh, ls star dot, I don't know what I've got in there, dot jpeg. I don't have any jpegs on the desktop. So that's a quick tutorial on navigating the desktop and viewing files, writing history, etc. So, uh, commands, history, uh, the cd command, of course. Uh, we got into ls and ls less. What else did we touch on? We touched on, oh, redirects. And uh, redirects and pipe. Pipe was the pipe less. Control C. Put that in parentheses. So, we've learned quite a bit. Uh, F5. You do the screencast yourself. Um, uh, using Demo Studio or XVidCap, especially if you are a budding CS student, I would recommend you put together, start putting together your own portfolio of what you can do um, and show off to your teachers. Record what you're doing, share what you know, and, because what you know is wealth. Um, don't want to get into my own particular philosophies on uh, why <coughs> The world is tilting at such a crazy angle in so many directions for so many people, but it has a lot to do with uh, a flat world reality. There is not much difference now between the haves and the have-nots. We can fix it, though. Uh, Technology has promised lots of uh, in easy entryways for people to participate in the economy, and technology is clearly one of them. Um, especially in your own home, no, your own home neighborhood, build an LTSP network. Uh, there's lots of students out there, lots of people who need computer access but don't have it uh, for various economic means, reasons. LTSP network, check it out. Also, you keep an eye on the $100 laptop that's coming out this year. I want to thank you. My, again, my name is Dennis Daniels. If you, this has, uh, video has helped you in any way, please send me an email. Um, happy computing, people.